His family abandoned him. A rich doctor adopted him. What he did then is hard to believe. Being the focus of ridicule can be depressing at times. Unfortunately, unless they are forced to walk down that path, people do not realize how much it hurts. A young boy who is left folded in half by a horrible muscular condition has described how doctors refused to operate on him because his deformity was so severe. His ailment left him unable to walk or even sit up straight. After being born with a crippling quadriceps contractor that dislocated his knees, Ulrich, who lives in Africa, was forced to walk using sticks to support his body weight in order to carry out his daily activities. Ulrich was subjected to continual staring whenever he went out into public, and he was afraid that his condition would only deteriorate further because surgeons, quote, refused to touch him. In addition, Ulrich's family was unable to afford the procedure, and Ulrich's mother, Georgette, has stated that it broke her heart to see her son go through the ordeal. She said the following to the charitable organization Mercy Shems. Surgeons wouldn't touch him and it was difficult to see him in pain. When he is in pain, so am I. Ulrich's quadriceps contracture causes his muscles to grow at a slower rate relative to his bones, which results in his legs bending forward significantly more than they would otherwise. Before he began to experience pain in his hands and joints as a result of his abnormal stance, he resorted to utilizing sticks as a crutch in order to keep himself upright and to make short distances. He explained, I was afraid that if I was already in this much discomfort now, it would only become worse as I got older. I was afraid that would be how I would grow up. I didn't want this to be the entirety of my existence at any point in time. The family was overjoyed when the charity Africa Mercy offered to pay for the youngster's treatment, which ultimately resulted in his being able to stand upright for the very first time. Due to the severity of Ulrich's condition, he required a number of intricate procedures. But after the last one, he was able to give his mother a hug for the first time in a long time. He also reported that for the first time in his life, he was able to touch the ceiling. He stated, When I used to walk down the street, people used to gaze at me. They differentiated their treatment of me based on the assumption that I was only a disabled person. They will look at it once more now. Ulrich, now confident in his ability to take care of himself, is working hard to realize his ambition of attending college. Someone asked Ulrich, who was only 12 years old at the time, what do you want to be when you grow up? He said with a grin, I want to be tall like my pals. I want to be tall like my friends. Even the most seasoned of the nurses working aboard the Africa Mercy had never encountered a case precisely like Ulrich's. He was born with both of his knees dislocated as well as a disease known as quadriceps contracture. Quadriceps contracture is a condition in which the leg muscles don't develop at the same rate as the bones, which causes the legs to bend extremely backward. His mother, Georgette, exerted an incredible amount of effort in an attempt to get Ulrich the necessary surgery. Her hopes were dashed, however, when she learned of the high expense of his surgery and the severity of his condition. Recalling the incident, Georgette says, Surgeons wouldn't touch him. It broke my heart to see him in so much pain. When he's in pain, so am I. In spite of everyone staring at him all the time and making fun of him, Ulrich has adjusted to his predicament. He used sticks fashioned from branches of strong trees to learn how to walk. Even more impressively, he was able to climb trees more effectively than any other boy in his village. They'd call me if they were unable to pick the largest papaya by themselves. Ulrich stated that he would be able to acquire it. However, the toll that his quest to be like other boys imposed him was quite significant. As a result of sustaining his body weight and walking for extended periods of time, he acquired pain in his hands and joints. I was scared that if I was suffering this agony now, it was only going to become worse as I got older, he added. If I was feeling this pain now, it was only going to get worse as I got older. It crushed his heart that he was having a harder and harder time assisting his mother with day-to-day -day tasks such as helping around the home, gathering firewood and getting water. I was afraid that would be how I would grow up. I didn't want this to be the only thing that ever happened to me in my life. Dr. Frank Hayden, a volunteer surgeon from the United States who's been volunteering with Mercy Ships for the past eight years, was taken aback the day that Ulrich arrived aboard the Africa Mercy for his free operation. He moved like an insect, like a cricket, he said. It was creepy. I'd never seen anything quite like it. Just when I think I've seen it all in my profession, I encounter someone like Ulrich, and that motivates me to keep going. Ulrich awoke from his coma with two casts on his legs, both of which were in perfect straight positions. It was difficult for him to accept the fact that those were indeed his legs. When he stood up for the first time, he raised his hand toward the ceiling to check if he could touch it. 
As soon as he took his first steps, he ran right into his mother's arms. According to Kirsten Murphy, a volunteer nurse, it was the first time he'd been able to hug her since he stood up straight. And right now, Ulrich is confidently striding forward toward acceptance and toward the fulfillment of his desire of receiving an education. In the past, if I walked down the street, people would give me strange looks. They treated me differently because they believed that I only had a disability because of this misconception. I'm sure they'll take another look now, smiled Ulrich. Before Ulrich disembarked from the Africa Mercy, he took his time approaching Dr. Hayden and presented him with a very thoughtful present. Two of his old walking sticks. He won't have any use for them anymore. At another similar story, Boy was bullied for having deformed legs like a flamingo. We discover as we become older that a person's heart matters a lot more than their outward appearance. Even if this could be the case, teaching our kids this lesson might be challenging. They learn what normal is through the media, parents, and other kids, and it can be quite challenging to shift this perception. Numerous programs have been launched to combat bullying in schools, but sadly they have had only modest amounts of impact. Children who are not seen as typical might experience a great deal of trouble, particularly when it comes to bullying from their peers. Aldrin, a young child, is the only one who truly understands this. Congenital knee dislocation, which caused Aldrin's knees to bend the other way, or as we would say backwards, was a birth defect. The youngster was unable to stand upright due to its unusual shape. He had a hard time walking and was in a lot of pain in his legs. However, the emotional pain of being ridiculed by his classmates was more than the physical pain. Aldrin was frequently made fun of by other kids for having legs, quote, like a flamingo, they would say. The boy's self-confidence was severely damaged as a result, and he even began to question his own existence. Any child should never have to go through something like this, but for a while, Aldrin believed that his future only held more suffering for him. The 11-year-old youngster finally sought assistance this year and arrived at the Tebow Cure Hospital. Tim Tebow was personally approached by a hospital representative who informed him of the situation once the doctors learned about the boy's condition. The former NFL quarterback Tim Tebow was touched by Aldrin's suffering. Tim's life had been affected by a youngster quite similar to Aldrin many years prior, so he knew he had to see him in person. Tim's parents, who were American Baptist missionaries, raised him after his birth in the Philippines. Tim's father brought him on his first missionary journey to a distant island when he was a teenager. They spent more than 30 years working in the Philippines. Tim crossed across with Sherwin, a young Filipino boy, while traveling. Sherwin wore his feet backward, according to Tim, and had a very uncommon congenital abnormality. He was born with his feet pointed in that direction, which made walking quite challenging for him. Tim felt motivated to help people like Sherwin by hearing his story. When he founded the Tim Tebow Foundation, an organization that seeks to provide faith, hope, and love to people requiring a better day in their darkest hour of need, the recollection of their time together lingered in his mind. Tim was immediately reminded of Sherwin and the struggles he had gone through when he learned about Aldrin. There was no question in his mind that he needed to take action to assist this youngster. Aldrin was told that since he was already 11 years old, he should not have surgery. He couldn't have undergone the operation while he was younger, therefore he wouldn't recover as quickly as he would have. A strategy was developed by the medical staff at Tebow Cure Hospital that would alter Aldrin's life permanently. After a four-hour operation, the kid was miraculously able to stand up straight and walk normally. This represented a major shift for Aldrin. He would no longer endure unceasing suffering. He at last got an opportunity to live a life free of bullies. The team's assistance was extremely helpful to Aldrin's mother, who never imagined this day would arrive. She said, When he underwent surgery, it was okay since their personnel encouraged us and they took extremely good care of us. They boosted my confidence and gave me the assurance that God is in control and has a plan for what is best for him. Like your doctors and whatever is best for Aldrin, God is in charge. Aldrin is currently practicing walking regularly while using a walker, and he will soon be able to walk independently. Because of the kindness of another person, his life has truly been altered. Sherwin, thank you, Aldrin replied. One life can really affect another.